Hey sewing friends, today I'm here to share everything that I made last month. So this is everything that I made in January. Now January was not super like sewing focused for me, but I did manage to make a couple of things, um, a promised late Christmas present, um, a couple of things for me, and then my kiddo decided that she really wanted to learn to sew. So we did a couple of projects together that I will share at the end. If you can skip it if kids sewing is not your thing. But yeah, I wanted to pop on here and just share what I made. So I will start with what I am wearing, which is a little cheeky because this is actually my mom's Christmas present that now that it's finished, I will be sending it off to her this weekend. Um, yeah, I had planned, of course, for her to unwrap a lovely dress on Christmas morning, um, but instead she got a little card <laughs> with the line drawing and a fabric swatch instead because I got so ill in December. It was really unfortunate. Um, so I have to send it her way now that it is finished, but um, it is special and I wanted to tell you about it. So back in August, we were shopping together and she was looking for um, a couple of new dresses for her new teaching job. She's a Montessori teacher for kids ages three to six. So she needs to like look put together for parents and stuff, but still be able to like move around with toddlers and young kids. So we were looking at some like elastic waist dresses, some things with uh, multiple like layers that she could take on and off and all of that stuff. And we came across this dress that she totally fell in love with. It was blue paisley and it had like an elastic waist and a little like ruffle hem. And sadly they didn't have her size in the store. So we like went around shopping, whatever. And back in December, I saw this fabric when I was just like scrolling as you do fabric stores online and I instantly thought of that dress that she fell in love with and I was like oh I can like purchase the fabric I can whip this dress up in no time and give it to her for Christmas well my body had other plans and that did not happen but um, I think she's really gonna love it so this is the Davenport dress from Friday Pattern Company and again like when I saw the fabric I immediately like thought of the dress that she loved and like with the details I was like oh yeah elastic like drawstring waist ruffle hem um, I know exactly what pattern I'm gonna use and I had made the Davenport before and really enjoyed making it it's a really fun sew with like the elastic and then the yokes through the uh, shoulders and the back it's just a really like fun one to put together so i was really excited about that and now that i have made it i'm like i almost don't want to i do i totally want to give it to her um i definitely want her to have it and love it um and it makes me really excited to make a davenport dress uh for me very soon so this is another number that I was hoping to have made in December that I'm just getting around to this month. So at the same time that I bought this paisley fabric, I saw this really cozy, cuddly sweater knit, and I thought um, a Christmas day dress in a nice winter white. It's not really white, it's more of a cream, but I thought it would be so, so cute. And um, I was right, it is really cute. I love how this dress turned out. Unfortunately, I did not make it in time for Christmas. Uh, I only just made it a couple days ago, but yeah, it is super, super snuggly, um, really soft and warm. It kind of hits that like, I feel comfy and cozy, secret pajamas kind of thing, but I do feel like it like looks nice and put together. Um, I'll probably wear like a little belt, um, do a, like maybe a long necklace to kind of break it up a little bit <laughs> um, since it is just like, a long solid color um, but I really love this dress making it was a pain in the butt um, because of the fabric oh I didn't say what pattern it was I think um, this is the seamwork Brit and it's my first time making this pattern I did my usual like uh, narrow and sloping shoulder adjustments and I'm so glad I did because the fabric just like stretched on and on and on and I had to make so many like on the fly adjustments um, just from having like the unstable fabric. It was very frustrating um, and I did like read a bit about how to work with sweater knits. I like made sure that my machines like the differential feed was set to not stretch it out. I used some like interfacing and 
it just wasn't good enough for how <laughs> how temperamental this fabric was um, I was really really frustrated like the whole time and then like as I was trying it on to make those adjustments I was just thinking like this project is such a fail I like very begrudgingly stuck with it I was so mad like the whole time um, until I put the cuffs on I had already hemmed the dress like it was all done except for just gathering the sleeve into the cuff and I did and I like finally tried it on it was like I love this this is exactly what I wanted I'm so excited now so it was definitely like <laughs> um, quite the roller coaster of a sewing journey for this one um, yeah definitely a like the destination a lot better than the journey the journey on this one terrible but I did end up with a dress that I really like it's super cozy and snuggly and I know I will get a lot of wear out of this one so this is my other make that I made for me uh, in January this is the hive pullover from Allie Olson and this is my uh, Minerva make for January so I'm a Minerva brand ambassador and they do not ask that we share it on any of our like personal channels but um, yeah I choose the fabric in exchange for a post on the product page so that when people like go to check out the fabric or the pattern they can see it made up by other people and like how it how it falls what it looks like in different patterns on different body shapes so yeah they don't ask me to put it here but I am like so proud of this um, of this make and I just love it so so much that I wanted to share it wanted to tell you about it here even though that they like don't ask me to do that but yeah so anyway it is like the collar kind of like messes with my hair a little bit um, okay so it is in a fur back sweatshirting that was the fabric that I chose and it is like the coziest warmest thing I think I have ever worn um, definitely that I've ever sewed with um, I've sewed with like regular cotton sweatshirting where like it's just a thick jersey that one side is like brushed this is actually like two separate pieces of fabric that are bonded together so the inside is like a low pile polyester faux fur so it is really really soft it is super super warm and then it's bonded that other side to um, a regular like single cotton jersey and together they are like so soft and so warm I was a little bit worried about the polyester content if it was going to make me like hot or itchy or like bother my skin it totally doesn't I reach for this sweater like so so much I actually really need to like stop wearing it so that I can get pictures for my post but it's just like so so nice and I love it so much now I will say it's kind of another one where like the journey was a little rocky but I'm like so happy with where I ended up now I had thought that this collar piece um, was going to be difficult to insert um, it was the reason that I like bought this pattern when it came out I really really love this little like half zip I can't show it to you like zipped up because of like the microphone but it is really super cozy I love this funnel neck and the nice insert it came together really really well actually um, Ellie Olson has a tutorial that is linked uh, like a video that's linked in the pattern instructions so that was great to follow I just like took my time it did take a lot of time for me I'm not usually a quick sewist anyway but like I really really slowed down and that was really nice I even added like some decorative top stitching so that was great and then I went to like I finished everything else I got my sleeves done side seams I attached my hem band and I was like this is not good <laughs> I'll pop in a picture basically like because it is boxy and short it was just like falling straight down from my widest point which is my bust so like from the side just <laughs> A lot of open air um, for as warm and cuddly as this fabric is having it just be like fully open like what what is that from like my bust to my waist like that much at the bottom I was like this is not cute 
this is not functional, I am cold, I hate everything about this. So I had to do some like on the fly fitting. I ended up taking the waistband off and even though I had already lengthened the front bodice piece like to try to accommodate for my bust, it just it wasn't enough. So I cut a new waistband from the toaster sweater by So House 7 and like that was going to be how I dealt with like the length issue, but I still needed to bring it in because if I had left it the way it was, it would have been long enough, but I still would have had that like awkward updraft from, from the boxiness of the shape. So I ended up just like taking it in pretty dramatically at the side seams. And I was like, I really hope this works. <laughs> hope I'm not just like ruining this sweater. Um, but I ended up taking, um, yeah, like a good three inches out of each side seam and like at the bottom, at the waist, and then grading it to zero to the armpit. And so it, it went from being like straight up and down, like all 90 degree angles to being like, like really brought in. But it is like enough that I can get the waist over my bust, thanks to it being like a stretch knit fabric. And I'm really happy with how it looks. It was like a big risk and I was really worried that I was just like gonna ruin it. But at the same time, I was like, well, it's not wearable as it is. So I'm just gonna take the plunge. And yeah, now I'm, I'm like so happy with it. Like I said, like I can't stop reaching for it. It is just so cozy. I love the color. I love like injecting, like it's definitely like a wintry piece. And I like having something that is wintry still be like bright and light and fresh, um, which is how I really feel about like both of these neutrals um, that I made this month. Also, they are both makes that check off a category of my make nine for this year. So already in January, I'm like two out of nine checked off. Now I will probably like make more in the future. Um, since my categories for make nine were like a knit dress, a sweater, like I might make other sweaters or I might make other dresses. Um, but for now, I'm still very happy uh, with both of these makes, but especially this sweater. So the last two things I have to share were made by me and my kiddo. So my kid is six and she has been asking for a sewing machine for like a year now. And it's something that like we were seriously considering, but we knew we didn't want to get like a toy sewing machine that was going to break. Like we wanted her to be able to actually like make something and grow into it if it was something that she would really like. But we also didn't wanna like get her a real sewing machine and then have her use it once and like be disinterested. So we didn't get her a sewing machine for Christmas. Instead, I grabbed a fabric from my stash, matching thread and um, a Sarah Hearts label, one that says made by me. And I wrapped it all up as like a little project kit. Um, a little project bundle and that is what I've had under the tree for her on Christmas and she was so excited um, the label like she she loves labels whenever I make something for her she like that's the best part is like picking out the label and yeah so that was great so she's like so am I getting a sewing machine and I was like no but you can learn on my machine and we can make a dress together so that is what we did over winter break and she was so excited. She did such a good job. Now I had to help her a lot and anyone who like spends time with young kids or as a parent knows that like it is so much longer. <laughs> it is so much worse sometimes to let a kid do something rather than just doing it yourself. Um, so this was a whole day long project <laughs> when like it would have taken me you know, a couple hours at the most, um, between cutting it and like making it up. But, um, she loved like every part of the process. She pinned all of the pieces together. She like pressed every seam. Um, so basically I did all of the sewing on the bodice, but she put together the skirt and attached it to the dress and then did the hem like all by herself gave everything a good press and was like so excited about every single step of the process. She absolutely loved it on this first dress. Now, 
when it was time to make the second dress, when she asked to make the second dress, um, some of the novelty wore off and there was a lot of like, do we have to press our seams? And I was like, we do. It's not so fun all the time. She's like, so sewing is kind of boring. And I was like, it is. It is a bit boring sometimes. <laughs> I don't always want to do that stuff either. But, you know, it is part of the process, like the fun stuff and the unfun stuff. So, so that was like fun to kind of walk her through. Yeah, like I said, the whole thing is kind of like both was like a test of my patience, but also seeing like her be so excited and joyful about the finished product um, was really great. So again, for this one, like I did the bodice and then she put together the whole of the skirt and yeah, was a little bit bored while we were making that one, but then was like so excited to like show everybody what she had made. And she was like dancing around saying, thanks, I made it. So yeah, some ups and downs, but like little sewist in the making. We'll, we'll see if uh, she wants to do more projects or not. Um, but for now, she like really loved making both of these. I think I forgot to say the pattern is the peekaboo, peekaboo patterns, um, everyday dress. So both of these versions are with the circle skirt or like the half circle skirt, but it also comes with a gather skirt. Um, there's like an optional hood piece as well as three sleeve lengths. So it's the first time I had made the pattern, um, but I've had it in my stash forever. So it was nice to get some fabrics like out of off my fabric shelf and use a pattern that has been in my stash for ages. So yeah, it has been a fun little journey um, and she really loves the two dresses that she made. So that is everything that I made in January. Again, a lot of my like kind of creative time was either spent with my kiddo, um, kind of like walking her through that process um, of learning to sew, to sew together, um, or was just like kind of in the kind of regrouping, thinking for um, trying to do some like goal setting and some envisioning of what I'm hoping for 2024. So that was kind of a lot of my creative energy this month, but I'm still happy that I did get uh, a few makes, um, even though they're kind of like more simple ones. I'm hoping in February to kind of do some more like sink your teeth in type sewing. I've got some woven garments uh, on the cutting table that I'm excited to get sewn up. So yeah, that is what I made uh, this month. I would love to hear from you, like if you're, you know, what was your January like? Because I feel like January is such a weird, <laughs> such a weird time. A time where like, I never know what time it is. <laughs> I'm always kind of like, what's going on? Because um, there's like so much going on with like recouping from the holidays, like trying to, if you're someone that like does New Year's resolutions, like what are those like? So I, I find it like a really, I find transition times like very fascinating. So I'd love to know like how you spent January, like creatively, if you did a lot of making or some planning or just like focused elsewhere entirely, like not even on sewing. Um, yeah, let me know. You can either like drop me some comments below or you can go find me on Instagram. Yeah, I love talking about all things creative. So yeah, that is all from me. My voice is like running ragged. So I really need to go probably have a cup of tea uh, before I go to bed and yeah. So that is all from me. Until next time, happy making, guys. Bye.